Hello guys and welcome back to Outdoors for Adventure. I'm going to do a quick video on this Grand Cherokee. I just put a switch panel to control all my lights and I have a front bar. These little lights I used to have in the rear, I moved them to the side. And then I have a trace bar up there. I'm not done, I still got to paint it or paint the brackets. And then the other side light. And the only way I know how to, to get the wires up to the rack on this thing is come through the tailgate. These have been here for ever since I've had it. And I haven't had any issues. I keep an eye on them. But no uh, wearing through the wires so far. So everything's good. And I just go across the top of the going up I just go through the top of this and then down and then to the underneath the passenger seat now the Jeep Grand Cherokee the passenger seat has the batteries under it so a lot of people when they install these switch panels mine is a GZ uh, S or is that a 5 CG we'll see how, how good it is after a while but it, it, it does everything I need it has monetary flashing and uh, steady on now this over here is to that track bar now on that track bar instead of finding a switched wire I just tied this into my controller here because this is all switched and that saved me from uh, trying to find a wire for this because uh, the box that comes with the control box that comes with this has one wire that goes to it and makes it switched. And I'm going to pop my hood. Now the fuse length they sent me with that did not fit my fuse size. So, so I have to go get me another fuse length. So don't judge me because I wanted to see if it worked. So I just tapped into the fuse that's there. And that is the back 12 volt plug. Uh, and on this fuse here, you can move it over one slot and it'll be on all the time. Or if you move it back toward the front of the vehicle, it's fused or switched. And if you use the very front tab on mine that is the switched so the, the left or uh, let's say the inside tab is the hot one and then the outside tab is only hot when the key is on so on this other one both these tabs are hot because it's not switched once you plug in it's hot so that's the wire that goes to your control panel that makes it key switched. And then I just run up through here. And that, this is the only wire that I went through the firewall. And I went through the firewall and one of the plugs down there. I just made a hole, pushed it through, and it sealed itself. So as you can see, there's no control box anywhere in this compartment. And I, I really didn't see any reason why it needed to be there. You can't see any wires, but the wires come up under the dash and then they go through here. And you can see all my wires down there going underneath the seat. So underneath the seat, you can see this panel here. You're going to pop the two, piece, uh, the two pins up. There's one here and there's one here that hold this down. So you pop this up and then you'll move the seat all the way forward. And these electric seats take forever to move forward. But I'm not showing the whole thing today. I'm just kind of giving y'all an idea what you can do. Because I've got all kinds of stuff in here. Because we just got back from a trip. But anyway, you can see that panel down there. So much stuff. You can see this panel down here. And I had it locked in. I may have to move a couple of things. But there's room right here on this inner side 
for that control panel to go down in sideways. And you've already got your batteries here, so your positive post, your negative post, and the only other thing that requires is that one wire to make it switched. And then your wires running to your lights hook up to that. Now I know a lot of people want those in their engine compartment, I guess. All mine are right there. And I could get some loom and put over that. And I, in fact, I should have went in front of that rail and that would have hit a little bit more. But I'll get a piece of wire loom and put over that right there and make it uh, not seen as bad. But that control box does fit down there. And I even used the foam that it came in to kind of cushion the side that rides against the metal of the floorboard. Uh, and, oh, the uh, switch, this uh, trip switch is also down there. I mean, there's room for everything. There's a bunch of extra length of wire that I uh, zip tied together. So if I wanted to move it later, I had plenty of wire, but it, it's all underneath that seat. Nothing to do with that part of it is in the engine compartment. And then, of course, these wires, they run underneath all this trim. Now, some of them run along the bottom of the tire lid. But I did find that I could just continue running up and then go across the top. In fact, I forgot to pop this one back in. I've been prying on it. I had to heat that up and push it back up. But you can go through here and then down the back and then across the top. So, I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can run wire. And I'm sure there's a better way than what I did. But it worked. Most of it you can't see. You can see that section there. And this trim piece back here, for some reason, ever since I've had this thing, I've never got this piece to fit real good. <clears throat> even before the wires was here and this piece has always poked out so I, that's a cb antenna there that i actually plan on rerunning since i did this uh, yesterday and i'm gonna make it go up kind of like that side over there over here where you can't see it but i don't have my cb mounted really haven't figured out where i want to put it and right now it's just underneath the seat on the driver's side and if i want to use it on a ride i'll just pull it out and lay it beside me somewhere but these wires you see these there's no wires back here to see and then you have one wire here that i run up underneath the console and it runs all the way along the console and it's underneath the passenger seat so I think it's a pretty clean install. I didn't want to put that up on the dash. You can't see it back here. And I can't actually see that, but I, I know what each button does. So I don't really even have to. Once I see where the button location is, I can just reach down there and do my buttons without needing to uh, really look at them. But as you can see, this is switched. I hit that power and nothing happens. But once I turn the AC on and turn that on, you can see I have power. Okay, so on the chase light, let's turn this all back off. If I want to turn my chase light on, I hit this button right here. And you see it powers this up. So once I come down one click, that chase light's on. The red lights are on, which uh, marker lights and once i come down here those yellow lights in the middle are flashing and you have nine different flashes that you can go now i did not use the reverse switch the brake pedal switch uh what's the, other, the turn signals i didn't need all that you know i have them on my vehicle and i didn't want anything that high 
you know, I'm not using this unless I'm off-road. So I put it that way. I didn't need that stuff. But I did use the reverse light, the white light that's in the middle of the bar. And what I did there is you had to turn the, the power to the switch here. And you turn this on. And then I can come over here to this middle one. And that'll turn my white reverse light on. So whether I'm at camp or whatever, if I want to light the back of the vehicle up, if I need to back up into something and see, I can just hit this button here and that, that uh, white light comes on. And then I can turn that track bar or trace bar so we're driving and I need it sometimes and then sometimes I don't need it. I can just turn it off here. And once I turn it, if I don't turn that switch off, once I turn it back on, that, that bar is back on. But if I want it flashing, I got to move over here and hit the toggle switch. But that was just to keep me from trying to find another switched wire. And I definitely didn't want to pull both of them off the same fuse. And since the fuse I pulled off of to make our control panel switched, all that's doing is powering relays, so that's very little juice that it's pulling, so you don't have to worry about blowing fuses up there, you know, unless something majorly goes wrong. But uh, cleaned up the setup a lot. You know, I did have a bunch of toggle switches up here with a whole bunch of wires running from here underneath the seat over there because I still used the battery post under the seat to hook everything up instead of going through the firewall. But I've noticed a lot of people putting that looking for a place to put that control box under the hood and there's not a lot of turn this off there's not a lot of space in the grand cherokee hood to put a lot of stuff now i do know and like the air hoses to my air suspension you don't want to you don't want nothing touching that you don't want nothing you know around your elbows and there's just not a lot of space. I have seen people mount them right here off this edge. And the majority of them lay them this way across the top of this fuse box. And they mount them right there. And then they put their uh, strip switch up here. And then, of course, all the wires go through here. And they're hooking up to this hot. And they're hooking up to this ground. Which is fine. But I just figured since it's almost like there's a slot made underneath the passenger seat to hold that control box. So in my opinion, I think this is the best route to go. If I need to get to it, it ain't too bad to get underneath there and pull it out and go through it. But you shouldn't, if everything's right, you really shouldn't have to mess with it. But I just thought I would share, that's how I hook mine up and all my lights work without any issue and you don't have to put anything up here to go through the firewall except your switched wire that runs from the fuse box to your control box under the passenger seat now if you're like me and you have lights on the front down here the wires to those are going to have to go through your firewall to your box and they, they go down right through there too that plug right there i don't know if y'all can see it it's awful dark but that's the only thing that's going through the the firewall i had forgot about having to run those those lights i know i don't know any way without coming through the firewall there's no good way that i know to get wires from the roof rack from the front that I know of without it looking really tacky and it looks tacky coming up through the back but it's back here I can deal with it and I said I'm gonna paint those brackets and stuff in fact we're gonna get paint today so anyways I'm just hoping I give you all some idea another option instead of mounting all that in the, the engine compartment just look underneath your passenger seat there's a big space in between the battery and the console side that can hold your control box. It holds your switched, uh, your breaker switch. There's plenty of room underneath there for a ton of wires. So uh, 
give it a give it a look at before you mount it up here and see what you think i like it and i'm done it's a pretty clean look and i just wanted to share